Hi, I'm Gregory Paolini, and on today's episode of Table Saw Techniques, I'm going to show you how to rip really narrow strips of wood of a consistent thickness in a very safe manner on your saw stop table saw. So stick around. There are a lot of reasons you might need a thin strip of wood ripped from a wider board. These could be for making shims for furniture or cabinetry work. It could be for making a runner for a jig or a, a crosscut sled. Or it could be that you need a lot of thin strips, all the same thickness, for bent lamination work. Regardless of why you might need these thin strips, let me show you some real safe ways to cut them. For the utmost in safety, you'll want to make sure that whenever you're ripping stock, you've got your blade guard in place. But because we're working on such small pieces, and I really want you to see what's happening here, for the purpose of this video only, I've removed the blade guard and I've installed the riving knife. So let me start by showing you what you don't want to do. It's just not safe to bring the fence super close and try to rip a real thin strip in between the blade and the fence. There's no way to really control the piece that's cutting through there. The thin strip could get caught between the fence and the blade and kick back violently. It's just too dangerous. To cut safely, you'd want the thin strips to be on the outside of the blade. And that's fine if you only need one strip, but if you need a lot of them that are the same thickness, there's really no way that you're going to accurately move the fence exactly the same amount each and every time without some sort of indexing device figured into the equation. Now the key to just about any consistent cut is to utilize a stop block, and it's no different in this case. And the stop block that I like to use is pretty simple. You could clamp a board onto the table saw to act as a stop, but I like to use these feather boards. You can get them at just about any woodworking store, and as you tighten them down, this little bar expands, and it locks itself inside the miter slot. All right, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna set it in the miter gauge, and again, I don't have the feathers towards the blade, I'm using the blunt edge. And what I'm using it for is just for a stop. That's it. The distance between the edge or the point of this block and my blade widthwise is the same thickness as the strip I'm trying to cut. The easiest way to get this measurement just right is by taking a straight piece of wood and putting it against your blade. Then, measuring the desired width of the strip that you want plus the thickness of the blade or the kerf of the blade. In this case, that kerf is one eighth inch and my desired strip is a quarter inch. So I'm looking to go to three eighths of an inch. And I'll tighten that down. There we go. Now it's not going anywhere. Okay, so the way this is going to work is I'm going to take my board, put it up against my stop, move my fence over, and lock it in place. I'm going to make a pass, and notice how I've got the block angled a little bit. I only have one point of contact here. I don't want to introduce any kind of situation where I could have any kind of binding. So I want to make sure that my stop is angled away from me towards my cut. That's going to almost act like one single feather board. All right, so I'll put this in, I'll make a cut, and the waist is now going to be one quarter of an inch thick. 
After I make that first cut, I can readjust the fence, butting up against this again. And my second cut will be exactly the same thickness. I can do this over and over again. It gives me very predictable, consistent results. All right, I'll just put on some safety gear and we'll make some cuts. This simple push block lets me exert downward pressure while steering the workpiece, keeping it tight against the fence. The hook on the back of the push block allows me to kick the offcut safely to the side. Then I simply readjust the fence, butting the blank against the stop, and make another cut. This setup ensures very consistent results and is super simple. And there we go. There's a bunch of thin strips that are all consistent thickness. These will make excellent runners for different jigs and that sort of thing. If I needed a thinner strip, let's say for lamination work, I could just decrease the gap between the blade and the stop. I can safely rip dozens of pieces, all a consistent thickness, thin enough for lamination work or even artistic projects. And that's how simple it is to safely rip narrow strips of wood on your saw stop table saw. Join me again for another episode of Table Saw Techniques.